Alright, uh, and to host the evening, uh, we have two drag queens that show us bigger isn't always better. Uh, please welcome to the stage, Robin from HR and Candy Dish! Oh my goodness. Um, um, yeah. I forgot that we have to let the girls talk tonight. I'm apologizing in advance. Yeah. I'm really bad at spinning. I'm gonna rush her like she rushes the hand. Can you see? Me, 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 me. Okay, that's working. Hi, everybody. Hello. So we couldn't get anyone else to co-host with me tonight. So um, Robin was available because she's always available. Fuck off, bitch. How are we all doing? <laughs> Terrible. Are you ready to roast a bitch? Alright, don't lean on this, it sinks. We're all fucked. Well, first off, um, you all know why we're here. The challenge tonight is to make Amanda cry. Um, so we'll if no one goes. makes Amanda okay? cry, I'm leaving her to cry. So <laughs> someone make her cry. Please. Someone. I mean, life already made her cry. Hot <laughs> tea. Um, so there's three parts to the challenge tonight. The first part is roasting Amanda, which will be hopefully good. I, <laughs> hope I don't know how funny any of these girls are. Uh, so this might be a really boring half hour. <laughs> yes. They each have up to three minutes to roast Amanda, fellow competitors, me, judges, whatever they want to do. Um, and if their microphone gets cut off, that means they're over there three minutes and uh, they need to get the fuck off the stage. So just you're cutting them off. Yeah. Oh, Shit, yeah. Bitch. bitch, if you can't time manage, you're getting cut off. Fuck you. Right? Thank you. You know some of these girls can talk. Yeah, me included. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, second portion is a comedic performance in an under the sea theme. And their third part of their challenge tonight is an under the sea runway. Ooh. Yeah. We're like, we're like getting drag race level over here. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. Gonna be. You're eliminated, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't even win Worcester, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Is Jess JP here? No. Oh, see, she's too big to show up. <laughs> Who wants to meet our judges because you're so not familiar with them? <laughs> First, we have the oldest living chub in history. It's Kristen Evil. <laughs> Let her open because she's a professional comic. We saw how that went. Give it up for Caitlin Arkin. And we have the judge who wants to fuck everybody with the scratch on his face. It's Rocky Graziano. <laughs> and filling in for Violencia while she's off in Prague finding herself, we have um, the fisting queen herself, Magenta with a J. If you want to ride that gauntlet, just uh, give her a call. Don't. And then I have, um... You didn't know who she was either, right? Oh, yeah. Some girl. S I guess she works here, and um, we were just told to book her. But, um... I wanted her. We don't really know anything about her, so... So we don't have a joke. A yeah. The suck hard! Yeah! The joke writes itself. She'll suck you all hard, I guess. Sure. Oh, you you missed the joke of my name, you dumb bitch. Be the card. Yeah. Be ah. the card. Because I'm everywhere you want to be. But you can't fit through the doorway, so oh. let's go. Yeah. <laughs> oh. That is an awful pun. That landed like, like a fucking UFO. So did Speaking that of people who land like a UFO, our first roaster coming to the stage. Life has apparently already roasted her. Who would like to hear about her pay stub? I have in my hand plain Jane's pay stub. <laughs> and now uh, she's a makeup professional and she works at Ulta. She works at Ulta, makeup professional, fuck yeah. off. Let's see how well she does there. Plain Jane made $12 at Ulta. <laughs> For one hour of work. We're really proud of her. It's the one hour she's worked ever in her life. And looking like she's worked one hour, give it up for Plain Jane!
When does the time start? The second you say your first joke. Okay. You might want to bring the microphone closer. Wow. Um, let's get this zero to cook it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, when we were told to prepare Roast of Amanda, um, I was a little worried because there's such a huge pool of material, right, you guys? Um, I guess I'll begin with the fact that Amanda is um, physical human manifestation of belly button cheese. <laughs> um, I, have, I actually have a fun nickname that I like to call Amanda. Um, I like to call Amanda Amanda Play With. Oh. <laughs> Amanda uh, kind of reminds me of the sun. Not because she's warm and bright, but because she's massive and yellow. Um, unfortunately, unlike the sun, she'll never be a star. <laughs> Amanda likes to say that she's an 80-year-old living in a 25-year-old's body. Um, it's the other way around, girl. Yeah. A 25-year-old living in an 80-year-old's body. Woo! Um, in all honesty, I was shocked that Amanda was turning 25 because she easily passes for 55. It's not because she's bad at makeup. It's because um, she's wrinkly and she has a senior citizen's pass for the train. Um, What's the train? <laughs> she's also good friends with um, the ancient relics that are Chris Knievel and Melinda Wilson. Excuse me, legends. Legends. Um, um, let's get into Amanda's makeup. So, uh, she always draws her brows like she's surprised. I mean, they're always like up here, similarly to how um, the Botox in Rocky's face just always meant to like fucking petrified. <laughs> um, I recently stumbled upon a video of Amanda, uh, Amanda's first performance in drag, and I was shocked because I didn't know if someone could actually get worse at drag. <laughs> 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 It's kind of funny that Amanda's hosting a competition in which everyone, uh, all the contestants are better than her at drag. Um, even Veronica Powers. <laughs> Amanda likes to say, pretty fades. Dumb is forever. Fortunately for her, she's too stupid to realize that she's hideous. <laughs> um, isn't she easy to read, you guys? There's so much material. I mean, it's funny that she's easy to read because she's literally illiterate. <laughs> literally, she, the bitch can't fucking read. Anyways, um, this has been fun, you guys. Uh, Amanda, wherever you are. Right here. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, can't see because of the light scroll. I love you um, because you make me feel... <laughs> Wasn't she terrible? Awful. I just love playing Jane, contestant number one in Rocky's Next Bottom Race. <laughs> She'd be the winner. Candy, your outfit's beautiful. I haven't seen it. Fuck off. <laughs> Did you wear that before? She wore it last, last seat, last cycle. The first, the first challenge the first for the cycle. I forgot we were doing a... I forgot we were doing a whale watch. Okay, so our next contestant... Well, my favorite thing about our next contestant is when I saw it last cycle on Akira Oni. It's toast! <laughs> Ahoy, y'all, and welcome to the SS Shady. My name is Captain Toast, and I'll be your tour guide on this evening's whale watching trip. Now, Boston's oceans are filled with many more creatures than just whales, believe me. And I'll be sure to point them out to you as we begin our cruise. Oh, if you look on your left, you'll see the majestic Plain Jane, or as her parents call her, a disappointment. <laughs> Plain Jane's natural habitat is the apartments of old white men. <laughs> Ooh, and if you look on your right, you'll see um, the mysterious, elusive Binks. You know, B 
Pinch has terrible vision, so she often has to move around with her sonar capabilities. You know, Pinch is so uh, colorblind that she honestly doesn't even see color. She thought racism ended years ago. Her vision is so bad, she can really never see why she's always in the bottom three. I mean, like, I want to talk, but at least I know I'm a bottom. Oh, if you look on the, uh, port side, um, you will see the seductive siren, Kirby Fully Loaded. Um, the only reason that they call her a siren is because, um, whenever she does a death drop, her life alert just starts going crazy. <laughs> Help, I'm a woman and I can't get up. <laughs> and at last, it looks like we have arrived at our main attraction. The irreverent Amanda Play with. Oh, wait, sorry. Um, it looks like I misspelled irrelevant. How embarrassing. <laughs> Y'all, be careful. This is one shady bitch. And I only say that because when whales jump out of the water, they cast a really large shadow. <laughs> You know, this might, this might be a little bit TMI, but um, I'm into some kind of freaky shit, right? So, yesterday I was feeling a little frisky, so I, um, I looked up sexy whale, but the only thing that popped up were pictures of a man to play with. <laughs> the only thing that turns me off more than that is seeing Chris Knievel on the judging panel. Shit. You know what I will say, though? Amanda and whales do share some striking similarities. For example, did you know that whales can eat 8,000 pounds of krill every day just to survive? Amanda can guzzle that much cum in about five minutes. And you know, that's not the only thing they have in common. Turns out, whales also fail the literacy test. We're learning so much today, aren't we? So, you know, at the end of the day, I think we all love Amanda. And I really can't help but feel bad reading her. It's kind of like waving your arms in front of like an amputee, you know? <laughs> I'm just kind of like flaunting the skills that they don't have, you know? <laughs> and with that, this roast has come to an end. Thank you for coming aboard the SS Shady. My name is Captain Toast. Okay, bye. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at up for clothes. <laughs> Alan, can you queue up bye bye bitch for me? Thank you. Oh, you guys laughed at my joke. Thank you. I hate that. So, and we've already made a lot of jokes about how Amanda looks like she's 40. Um, I really love how she's reappropriated culturally um, misery space. It's great. Who says cultural appropriation isn't funny? Speaking of 40 year olds, Amanda may paint like she's 40, but our next girl actually is 40. Give it up for Veronica Vandersnatch! Everybody. I'm so glad she's still in the competition. I have to be honest with you. Um, she reminds me a little bit of what Marcel Marceau would look like if he discovered eyeshadows. Um, no, we all love that Camille Del Arte stuff. Um, but I want to say though, with the balloon wigs, um, I'm always terrified she's going to pull one down, lure me into a drain, and say we all float down here. <laughs> but no, truthfully, I'm, I'm very excited for her for the sequel. <laughs> oh, Plain. Plain is surprising. Um, I have to say, when the competition began, I did not really see her that much of a competition, like, much of a competitor. Um, but she's proven to be a true talent, always, always leaving us guessing. Um, especially with her ever changing looks, you never know week to week what color her laundry will be. <laughs> Worth a lie. Uh, Chris Knievel! Hi! Right. Hi, Kay. Um, I just want to say, I generally do appreciate you. Um, Chris Knievel is one of those people that like I knew about well before I ever put on uh, wig and heels for myself. Um, and I have to say, just because it's true, I'm going to say the five words that every female performer hates to hear. I grew up watching you. <laughs> She looks like Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman. 
<laughs> Out of drag, she looks like Danny DeVito with the pen. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, I have Rocky. Rocky and I have a little bit of a long history. We, most people don't really know this, but we used to work together at the same company for a number of years. And to this day, I always think of you as the nasty uppity queen with the sharp eyebrows who won't unlock for me on Manhunt. <laughs> and as much as things have changed, I'm glad those McDonald's arches of yours have stayed your trademark. <laughs> But I'll still take those dick pics and never do. So let's go to the woman of the night. Where is Amanda? Amanda. Oh, hi, there you are. How can you miss okay. me? There she goes. You're not in your skin tight suit. <laughs> when I first met Amanda, it was actually backstage at Cycle One when I was doing Ramona's eyebrows. Um, wish that had helped Ramona. Um, <laughs> Let's say it all together. One, two, three. Learn, well, learn. you try. <laughs> um, but no, I, I'd have really only known her by being in the audience, and I just thought to myself, wow, what a seasoned professional. She commits so hard to playing the character of the dumb one. <laughs> and now, after all this time, we learned that, like, no, you're just the hairy man behind the curtain. <laughs> I thought all this time you were Daniel Day-Lewis. Turns out you were just uh, Jenny McCarthy. <laughs> but no, I, I can't. Oh. oh, that's three minutes. Oh, sorry, Snatcher. Get off my stage. Goodbye. Thank you, what Ramona Mirage wishes she was. Are you scoring as you go? Oh, it's just going to ask you. You can't, no, you don't have to. Like, you can just score the first one. Our next contestant is the only person I know I who can wear a $150 wig in an AliExpress dress and wear a challenge. It's Atlas! <laughs> Hi guys, yeah, it's me, Atlas. Boston's current reigning three. Woo! Oh my god, it's so funny considering the presence of so much drag mediocrity. Hi Magenta! Do you like my outfit tonight? Um, yeah. It's uh, all these crabs, I screen printed them myself. Uh, but unlike Chris Knievel, who contracts them the old fashioned way, <laughs> Chris Knievel, an age old Boston icon to the drag community, to epidemiologists, patient zero. <laughs> Anyways, it's lovely that we're here tonight to celebrate the birth of Dorothy's only balding 25 year old employee, Amanda Playwith, <laughs> a quote, woman who self identifies as, quote, booked. But, but despite her many failures, Amanda pursues her dreams fearlessly. Amanda has tried to fuck me several times now. About more than Binks has landed in the bottom, so I'll let that sink in. Uh, but funny enough, she's also uh, succeeded about as many times as uh, Veronica Vander Sanchez won. Zero, counting fan vote. Oh, uh, oh, 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 sorry about that. Um, you're fat. Oh, no, wait, sorry. That was my planned cyberbullying attack for Robin from HR. I just, I just let that say. Uh, here we go. Amanda's breastplate. It reminds me quite a bit of poise, actually. Neither smells great, um, and the proportions are definitely off. But unlike poise, Amanda's breastplate costs a lot more than $5 outside of the Worcester Palladium, so Amanda's pee is something to be discussed, however. Not her penis. <laughs> Not her penis. Uh, but her horrific padding. I didn't know that somebody could have such large breasts with a non-existent ass. But then I realized Caitlin is living a happy and fulfilling life. <laughs> <laughs> but, but when it comes to performance, it's something else when we're watching Amanda play with. Amanda play with knows her words about as often as Rocky thinks he knows good drag. And uh, judging by how well-maintained those eyebrows are, you'd think he'd notice how uh, asymmetrical Plain Jane draws hers. Um, but I digress. You know, a lot of people want to come up here and talk about how Amanda's makeup ages her, uh, but I have no interest. I just like to talk about how terrible it is. In fact, if I can, can I just offer you this piece of advice, Amanda? Quick drag. Okay, thank you guys. You have been great. Oh wait, I forgot to read candy. Uh, it's okay. Uh, Boston will drive her out soon, Rhode Island style. Uh, good night, y'all. Get off my stage. Fun fact. Um, 
I'm on what I call a self-proclaimed um, sabbatical from Rhode Island uh, because they drove me Bitch, home. you ran away and they drove you home. I did run away. They're so mean up there, down there. <laughs> there, there. Oh my God. No, no word of a lie. Like, um, remember last, oh God, I'm going to get so much shit for this when this goes online. Remember last challenge, Robin from HR, our lovely guest host tonight. What the fuck are you about to wrangle? Remember how she wrote that lovely opening speech? I didn't write it, I ripped it off a commercial. The only people who I got complaint emails from were from Providence. Ah. Team. So, thank you, Boston, for letting us make fun of STDs after Ramona Mirage's AIDS debacle. <laughs> Ramona <laughs> 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 Mirage, Mirage, the only person to win the most challenges and still plays fourth. <laughs> Talk about shooting sorry, yourself in the foot. Sorry, but still, this still isn't about this. This is not your idea. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> the, oh, that's right. Because civilization never showed up. She would have been fourth. Oh, I don't know. I saw her look. It was. I meant, I Speaking meant, of hot and sexy, our next roaster has her vagina. It's actually insured for a million dollars because it's the only thing that makes her stand out in drag. Give it up for Curdy Pully Loden! Alright, hi! Yes, just to clarify, I am a woman pretending to be a man pretending to be a woman. But gender is a construct, so suck it. Okay, let's get into this. Speaking of roast, there she is herself, the roasted potato, Mr. Manda Play With. Hi! So, I actually, I haven't known Amanda that long, to be honest. I met her at the beginning of this competition. I was astounded at the amount of content I was able to produce for this roast. Honestly, I had to cut it down. Let me start with a little story. It's a, it's a conversation that I've had with Amanda actually several times. It's, it's interesting. She says to me, Kirby, I'm Amanda, Kirby, I hate pussy. It is disgusting. It is vile. It smells. I want nothing to do with it. Now, most people might be offended by that, but you know, I'm an AFAB queen. I gotta learn to roll with the punches. And to be quite honest, I was sincerely relieved. <laughs> Never will I have to be sexually approached by the smelly penis that is Amanda Playwood. <laughs> now, I can't say the same for the rest of my fellow competitors, but I just want to let you all know that we are living in the age of Me Too and you are safe to report sexual harassment. <laughs> Um, yeah, now we're um, on the subject of smelly dick, so I'm just going to keep going. You know my friend Plain Jane? Yeah, you know her. She's so pussy. She's giving me that full fantasy woman, honey. Yeah, she's giving it to you visually. Next time she's popping that pussy in front of your face, just take a big whiff under her armpit, okay? It smells like onions and a teenage boy's cum sock. <laughs> Now that we're on the subject of cum, Rocky, <laughs> when do I get to suck your dick? Uh, no? first, first, I mean, the first time for everything. Yeah. I'm good at it. I, I bet you are. <laughs> um, okay, it's getting really hot, so I'm going to pull it down with a few jokes about Miss Chris Knievel. Hi. Um, so Miss Knievel, she's always talking about my juicy titties, you know? She's like, oh, I just want to have them for myself. Right, Chris? Yeah. Um, and you know what I say? And I think in my head, I just say, sure, Chris, you can have them, but I want your uh, white male privilege and 33 cents more an hour. Hey! Well, you didn't know Chris was a man? Are you blind? <laughs> okay, I'm going to finish off with some classic rose content. I'm going to say, a man to play with is so illiterate, and y'all are going to say, how illiterate is she? Okay, a man to play with is so illiterate. How illiterate is she? Betsy DeVos is taking a break from her assault on transgender children and taking the entire education budget to re-educate Miss Amanda. <laughs> a man to play with is so illiterate. Robin from HR would fuck her after trying to decipher her growler profile. <laughs> Man to play with is so illiterate. How illiterate is she? That's time. 
We'll never know. We'll never know. We'll never know. Thanks, Kirby. Thanks, Kirby Sweeties. They're the best thing about you. All right, it's Banks next, right? Sorry, my edible kicked in. Yes, yes. Um, so, basically, our next contestant has the worst track record, and it reminds me a lot of her taste in men. So here's Banks. <laughs> <clears throat> Just like somebody hooking up with a band to play with might say, let's get this over with. <laughs> so it's her birthday, we're gonna start off with some positives about her. Gonorrhea, chlamydia, measles, bubonic plague. We got a lot going on. <clears throat> this is the same girl that learned her STDs before her ABCs. <laughs> it's her birthday. I think she's aging pretty terribly. Uh, she is drinking from the Fountain of Youth. I think it is tapped with the water from Flint, Michigan. <laughs> Sorry if any, me or any of the other girls tonight are kind of awkward. We rolled a fat one before we got here. It's the only way to get Chris Knievel to the judges' table. Caitlin is a comedian who's claustrophobic, which kind of sucks because um, she's afraid of small rooms and those are the only places that'll book her. <laughs> Um, Rocky doesn't like my look because he doesn't like demons, um, which is because he has a fear of being exercised because he's afraid what his body might look like. <laughs> um, I've been thinking about these girls for the rose for the last week. I spent the last week thinking about Atlas. Now I don't like to be Atlas. So I'm depressing <laughs> Anybody here have been assaulted by plain James Arn pigs? Or is it just the normal girls? <laughs> I think it's just the most maybe. Um, does anybody here have phone storage issues? I only have a couple gigs left on mine. I have so many photos and videos. But now that Robin Edges has been eliminated, I can proudly say my phone has more gigs than her. <laughs> <laughs> um, but today we hear from Amanda, the girl who used to um, tutor kindergartners. She had to quit because the books had um, too many words she had never seen before, like taste. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you open the dictionary to the word stupid, um, you have opened more books than Amanda. <laughs> Amanda's a fat slut, but to know what that means, I need you to fuck her neck, her back, her pussy, and her crack. Um, she's pretty gross though, I wouldn't fuck her. <laughs> She's pretty gross though, I wouldn't fuck her with Candy's dick. Um, I wouldn't either. Do you guys remember that Stanford swimmer rate? Um, I want to know why Amanda didn't report it when she was inside the dumpster. <laughs> and if Amanda tells you that she has a big dick, she's actually not lying. Um, blueback whales have dicks that are 8 to 10 feet. <laughs> um, hope you have a happy birthday, Amanda. Um, thank you all for coming here tonight on this whale watch. That's it. Resident power bottom. The bitch is calling me Captain. Is anyone else to be that we can do it? Maybe I'll be in the top for once. <laughs> There's still three other challenges. She was in the top once. Plain One Jane carried her up there. <laughs> Team. Oh, <laughs> There's gonna be a double. Line. I'm not even high or drunk on <laughs> the bitch right now. Then she need to keep it together. I don't know where we're at. I don't know. They actually win. All right. Well, who's ready for our last roaster? She is proof that just because you're big and bold doesn't make you beautiful. Give it up for Marianne Laputain. <laughs> First of all, fuck you, Candy Dish. Your dad's dick is like a Chipotle burrito. It is poorly wrapped, and now we just have a mess. <laughs> anyway, and you wore that dress earlier this cycle, kind of like Chris Knievel, who has never changed her silhouette in her life. <laughs> Works for me. Also, does anybody follow her on Instagram? The bitch is really old. She doesn't know how to post a video. So it doesn't really work. So just like her actual performances, that shit doesn't move. 
Speaking of people who do the same thing every single week, Magenta with a J, the winner of Cycle 1, is <laughs> If you've ever seen her perform, it's like watching a drag queen impersonate the Hulk. No one has been so bad for the judges for being fuckable since Plain Jane. Rocky Graziano is also here tonight. As many of you may know, he was on MTV's Main. Caitlin Arcand was also on MTV on Where Are They Now? Wednesday Adams. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of horrible gods, Binks is also here in the competition somehow. <laughs> Binks is the Avril Lavigne of Boston. She is pretending to be goth, and you can find her clothing line at your nearest Sears next to home appliances. <laughs> and Toast is like the Carly Rae Jepsen of Boston. She released one song that became a meme, no one listens to her music, and she should try again in three years. <laughs> Honestly though, I'm a little bit afraid tonight of lip syncing against Kirby Fully Loaded, one, after that atrocious performance, and two, every time she jumps into a split, I'm afraid the building is gonna collapse. <laughs> But let's move on to the real fat bitch herself, Amanda Playwith. So Amanda hosts Snatched Sundays here every single week. No one has been that desperate to fill a Sunday night time slot since the Fox Network renewed Family Guy. I've always wondered how Amanda Playwith gets that thick, greasy, horribly applied makeup off her face. That's the power of pine salt, baby. <laughs> so, as also, as you may know, Amanda Playwith is going through a divorce right now. So here's why. The two of them were walking down the street, and then they were mugged. As Amanda was being attacked, she said, no, 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 the face. Her husband said, yes, please, the face. <laughs> Happy birthday, you filthy cum dumpster. <laughs> Did you hit submit after or not? Did you hit submit after or not? I'm so happy for Alan about this divorce. I know. We can finally fuck attractive people again. Nobody's gonna laugh at that! I did. Oh my god! She laughed at it! 